So to do that, in game menu, we should have a public button, destroy menu button. And we can, of course, keep that lowercase because it's not a property. And we're going to be using Unity Engine UI for that. So that's all we'll have in this script for right now. And now we'll go back over here. So when we create the new menu, we're going to get reference to the game menu, which we already did, but we're just going to cut this code out here so we can do a little bit more on it. And then when we're finished doing more stuff, we'll add it into the menu. But for right now, we want to assign functionality to the buttons. So what we'll do is menu dot destroy menu button and we'll do the on click event, add a listener so we can add a unity action. And that will be to destroy the menu of uh, the menu itself. So if we finish that up, it should work there. Cannot convert from void to unity events action. So normally when you do add listener, you can just directly reference a zero argument um, method, but we actually need a argument here, which is the game menu. So what we can do here is change this code up a little bit. And instead we're going to be creating a delegate here. So this is going to be a delegate of the method. And by typing it like this, we're actually able to pass in the parameter. So if you ever run into adding a listener for an on-click event and you need it, just wrap it in a delegate and pass that in as the argument for the add listener method. Um, now let's see here, menu.game object. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So this naming is actually a problem because we passed in menu over here. So. So we need to change this to some kind of new name. Let's go with menu component, I suppose. And we'll update the references to make sure we don't have anything going on with that menu up there. We only want the menu as the argument to be the thing we instantiate from. So let's see, menu component. Okay, we get the destroy button. We add the listener, which is going to destroy the menu of the menu component, which should get the game object and destroy the game object, also removing it from the list. So I think we're actually good here. In theory, this should work. So let's go test it out, of course. Okay, so back in the Unity editor to test this out, let's actually set a menu button here. So the menu button is obviously going to be inside of the prefab. Uh, as long as we're working with the prefab, you can just drag and drop references to other game objects inside of it because this prefab is going to be instantiated all as one thing. So it's always going to have a reference to this. So dragging that in here will work pretty easily. So we apply that to save it to the prefab. Uh, let's delete it from the scene hierarchy, hit play and test things out. Uh, no errors in the console, hit escape to open the menu. And now if we left click this, it should close the menu. Awesome. So now we have the functionality of these menus being set uh, without even having anything go on inside of the game menu. The game menu just contains a reference to the button. And uh, doing that sort of thing, we can separate basically our properties from the actual game code, having managers or systems run the code and then attached to our actual game objects are just uh, basically components that contain a bunch of data or references to variables. And this is kind of going more in the direction of Unity ECS, which isn't out yet, but the idea is you would have components rather than mono behaviors and they can only contain values. So I don't think a button would technically qualify there, but you would just have like uh, floats and booleans over in these components and, and then all of your actual functionality would be in system scripts. But that won't be out for quite some time now so don't worry too much about that unless it's something that really interests you. So now one more thing we do need to be able to take care of is to reference the save menu prefab. So the pause menu is supposed to be able to open the save menu as well. Now, I think for right now, I'm just going to take this prefab, cut it out and paste it into the menu manager. We'll just have the menu manager contain all of the prefabs for the game. But it'll be the buttons on the uh, menus themselves that actually do the opening, but the code will be stored here. So save menu prefab. We can actually just go ahead and delete the pause menu altogether. So I'm going to do that here. And now whenever we create the menu, We'll want to somehow check if it's a pause menu or a save menu to determine what buttons should be being put onto it. Um, now at this point, you could split this up into several different scripts. You could have like a save menu manager, a pause menu manager, all that other kind of stuff. So for right now, I will do public void um, and we'll say instantiate 
pause menu. And then we'll also have public void instantiate save menu. So what we'll do is we'll check what type of game menu this actually is before we do things like assigning this before we do stuff like assigning menu specific buttons. So the pause menu will have an open save menu button, but the save menu will not have that same functionality. But we don't wanna keep retyping this instantiate code. So actually we'll call this more like add pause menu functionality and add save menu functionality. So in order to figure out if we should add pause menu functionality or add save menu functionality to the game menu, uh, we need to check what type of game menu this is actually being. So game menu will actually turn into an abstract class here. So I'm going to do that now uh, because we don't want this to be its own class that people actually inherit from. We want to add a save menu script or a pause menu script onto um, the, the game object. So we're going to just check if... Um, menu component dot get type is equal to type of pause menu and if that's the case then we'll do something else if menu component dot get type uh, you know what this would actually make a little bit more sense if we just wrote it once so type is menu component dot get type Okay, so yeah, write once and then just reuse the variable. So type equals type of pause menu. Okay, great. And let's see else if type equals type of save menu. And then we'll do that. So great, add save menu functionality, add pause menu functionality. So at least at a basic level, that seems logical. So let's see now. Uh, how are we actually going to add that on? Well, first we're going to need reference to that menu component. So to do that, I guess we'll cast it. So casting it as a pause menu. Um, let's see, menu component. Does that work? Okay, well, it should. So let's see, pause menu, uh, pause menu. Okay, yep, no errors there. And then save menu, save menu. Great, so now we can have some custom uh, stuff to happen when it's a pause menu and some custom stuff to happen when it's a save menu So for the pause menu, so this is going to include a public button Open save menu button and of course we have to be using unity.ui and now back in the menu manager We can basically do this Function again, so we need to be doing it on the pause menu though, but we need to be doing it on the pause menu so now we're gonna get the other button which is open save menu button on click add listener and the listener there is going to be uh, create menu and the menu we're creating is the save menu prefab actually right here um, we can re basically reuse this code because we're going to need to make sure that that prefab exists so let's go ahead and create another method we'll call this public void or actually uh, private void because we don't really want other classes to call this so we'll call it private void validate prefab and which is going to take a game object prefab and then we're going to basically just call this code down here so obviously that's also calling the create menu so we can say validate and create and this should be more like menu prefab because what we're doing here is we're checking if the prefab has a menu script. Uh, oh, sorry, a game menu script. We want to be specific here. And if so, then instantiate the prefab. So we can just call this now. So we're going to be calling it on the pause menu prefab here. Pause menu prefab. And now we can call the same code over here. So instead with instead of calling create menu directly, we're calling validate and create menu prefab with the save menu prefab. And for the add save menu functionality, although that doesn't do anything right now, uh, we can 
set it up for later. So casting the menu component as a save menu. Now if we add anything to add save menu functionality later on, which we probably will, uh, then that can go in here. Uh, now just for clean up this private game object pause menu instance, we no longer need that because we're actually just maintaining a list of all the game menu instances. And better than managing it as a game object, we're just referencing the game menu script instead of the game object directly. Uh, also making sure that only game menus can appear in this list. Okay, so that made this error out. And actually, this really shouldn't be here anyway, because this just creates the menu. So we're going to cut that out. And what we'll do is go down here to where on escape, it will create that menu. And what we can do is for each, uh, let's see, game menu, menu in game menus, or what was it actually called up here? Active menu, sorry. Active menus, we check if the game menu is actually a type of a pause menu. So if menu.getType equals type of pause menu, then we'll assign exists to true and break because we don't need to check through any of the other um, game menu scripts here. So bool exists and now if exists does not equal true or rather we can just do exclamation mark exists um, now that's going to give us an error because it may not actually have been set there so we'll default that value to false so the code can run and there'll always be a false unless it actually gets set to true and if it doesn't exist then we run the validate and create menu prefab function here um, so by doing that, we've decoupled the create menu from checking to see if the pause menu exists, which is good. Um, so let's go ahead and see if all of this actually works. So first inside of the prefab, I'm going to change this from game menu to a pause menu. So remove component, odd com add component, pause menu. And we need a save menu prefab to put in here. Okay, also the script needed to load a bit there. It should have the parent variable set here too. So you see the destroy menu button and the open save menu button. Those should both appear there. So so if we take this pause menu prefab back out, uh, we're going to have the destroy menu prefab. So destroy menu uh, a button, sorry, destroy menu button. And we're going to reference that here. Oh, also, let's go to the scene so we can actually see stuff. Okay, so to see it, we're going to need to create a canvas at least temporarily. Well, why does that look so messy? Um, let's try re-adding the prefab onto that. I think that should fix it. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure what went on there, but if I stretch everything here, we can just kind of reset some of these values. And I'll hit apply. So setting those settings back to the prefab and Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Um, oh wait, but we also needed to do a couple more things there. So we need to set an open save menu button here. So you can see in the layout scheme, we created that button before. I'm gonna add that to open save menu button. So, so by doing this, the menu manager will be able to reference this button. And we just need to make sure to apply it on the prefab and we can delete it from the scene. Um, one thing we will need to create though is an actual uh, save menu because we haven't done that yet. So to do that for right now, I'm going to duplicate this pause menu. And we're going to rename it as save menu. And I'm also re-adding it from the prefab. So make sure that this is actually a separate prefab from the pause menu. So we're going to strip these buttons out because those won't exist in a save menu. We'll break the prefab instance, so we'll need to resave it over here, but that's okay. And for the top bar, we're gonna we're going to change the text from pause to save. Or we could call it save game. That's a little bit more specific. And maybe we expand the space at which it can display there as well. And we need to change the script on the prefab from pause menu to save menu. So save menu and you can see here it takes a destroy menu button at the moment so i'm going to assign that there and now we can overwrite the prefab that exists in our prefab uh, directory and finally we can delete these from the scene uh well i'm actually going to remove that 
text at the bottom as well. We don't need that. And so overwrite the prefab one more time. And now we can delete it from the scene, delete the canvas. And the last thing we need to do is for the menu manager, we need to assign the save menu prefab. So I'm gonna assign that here just very easily, um, selecting the prefab and we hit play. So we can see if the pause menu can in fact open the save menu now. So let's see, does the pause menu open? Yes, it does. If we hit save game, does the save menu open? Or well, something opened. Let me see here. Pause menu, pause menu, pause menu. Okay, so it's actually, it's cloning the pause menu. So I must have a minor issue in the code. Let's see here. Create menu. Okay, so the add pause menu button, open save menu, is calling validate and create menu prefab. So let's check down here and what we see is, oh, it's actually, it's using the pause menu prefab all the time rather than the parameter we passed in. So we just need to change that to prefab from pause menu prefab and that should work here. So let's go ahead, hit play or we'll hit escape, save game and it opens the save game menu. Um, now what we might actually want to do is have this pause menu become inactive temporarily or permanently. We could destroy it or set it inactive so that while the save game menu is open, the pause menu is not open. So this might not be what we want in the end, but we could just have the pause menu destroy, destroy itself whenever that button gets called. So pause menu um, dot open save menu button dot unclick dot add listener and yes we're calling the same uh, method here but you can do that multiple times so we just want to make it called destroy menu on this menu itself so that would be the pause menu and a semicolon uh, okay that actually goes on the inside a semicolon Okay, so now the onclick event has two listeners to create a new menu and to destroy the current menu. So let's test that one more time and then we can probably call it a video here. So we hit escape, save game, and the save game menu should also have the same functionality because it was a game menu and it was being created. So we click that and as the functionality to destroy the menu. So now we have a menu manager that allows us to create two different types of menu and assign custom functionality to both of them. The main menu manager is created using yeah singleton, so it's always a one of inside of our scene. And we can basically use that, uh, we can extend that later on to add in new types of menus or whatever we need it for. So hopefully this tutorial has been really helpful for you guys in getting set up with uh, your pause menus and save menus, but Hopefully even more than that, learning a bit about singletons and how you can implement them inside of your Unity game. So I've been Chris, thank you for watching and I will see you guys in my future Unity videos.